<laughs> there we go. I was tapping the screen then, nothing was happening. How are we doing everybody? Good evening. Let me just back up a bit without trashing the place. Um, how's it going everybody? Are we alright? It's 10 o'clock, where's my coffee? Here it is. Um, I'm going to wait for a, uh, a few minutes, let people join as per usual. Um, who's this? Carol is here. Carol, good evening. Good to, uh, good to see you. Um, for those who don't know me, by the way, if you're watching this on the replay, um, I'm just going to move this back a bit as well. Fanny's here. How are we doing? Hopefully this isn't going to uh, all fall off the desk. That's a bit better, isn't it? Um, I keep cutting my head off, you see. Um, let's move over. Here we go. Um, yeah, so for those watching on the replay, thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name's Ross. I'm an actor and a voiceover artist from Manchester in the UK. Uh, and I just go three times a week on a Monday, a Wednesday and a Friday. On Monday and Wednesdays, we do something called motivation and mind hacks, which are all little motivational hacks and mind hacks and productivity hacks and things that are going to help you get further in your life faster that are very simple to put into your life but are really going to make a big difference. Um, how are we everyone? I missed that comment. Cherise is here though. Cherise, good evening. Um, so uh, so yeah, if you're watching this on the replay, thank you. And you can actually go to actonlist.tv and you can watch. This is number 74 guys. This is Periscope number 74 um, that we've got going tonight. So there's another 73 still to watch on actonlist.tv. Uh, if you're an actor particularly, um, go and watch them. But they do apply to absolutely all walks of life. I've just seen um, Heather, Heather is here. I've just seen Nina join as well. Um, good evening, Kat is here as well. Um, everybody's jumping on now. So tonight, guys, we're talking about body language. For those who are part of the mastermind group that we've got, from a mind, I launched a mindset course in February called Bulletproof Actor: Unstoppable Confidence and Finite Success, and we, we're going through some live training at the moment. So we um, we had a bit of a, uh, a mastermind training session last night online, and we spoke quite a bit about kind of body language, and um, and we shared some some next level kind of stuff that, um, that unfortunately if you're not part, of, part of, the, of the course you don't get access to just yet but it made me think you know what we should do a scope on this as well and there's some stuff that, that I didn't share last night that I'm going to share tonight um, so this is all new stuff for everybody um, but body language is so important not just if you're an actor and um, for those who don't know um, and haven't joined these scopes before a lot of actors watch these scopes because I'm an actor but the stuff we talk about applies to all jobs every, every single person you know all, all kind of uh, different careers but body language in life actually um, it makes up 55% of communication. So 7% of communication is made up through verbal words. Literally, the words I'm speaking now are only making up 7% of what you are perceiving of me and understanding. 38% um, is made up in tone of voice. So you might have, for instance, I said last night on the training, like you, knew, you might have sent a text to somebody. Who's done this where you sent a text as a joke? But somebody's not been able to hear your tone of voice. So they've only got 7% of, of the meaning because they're just seeing the actual words and the language. They can't hear you say it and they can't see you so they can't interpret your body language. And they've maybe taken it as like serious when you only meant it as a joke, something like that. Let me know if that's happened or at least give some hearts, tap the screen. Let me know if you've been there or you might have been on the receiving end of a text that was meant to be a joke and you didn't take it as a joke. Um, you're not playing the usual backing music you have in your videos. Um, I, well, I'm not funny. I can't do that on. Um, I can't do that live on Periscope. But on all the replays, you will get the backing music. So, so you'll get that. Um, don't worry. Yeah, when you join these live, you don't get any of the any of the flashy things I can do in the edit, unfortunately. Um, but you so see, you get it raw. This is live and happening right now. So you get the bonus of being part of it. Um, but yeah, so so like I say, you know, you might have been on the end of one of those texts. And you've just not, you know, you've not understood it because you've, you've only heard the, well, you only had the language, so you've not had the tone of voice. That makes up 38%. The other 55% is all body language. It's all this, all this kind of stuff I'm doing, gesturing, leaning, all this sort of stuff, smiling. You can see my face, everything like that. So it's incredibly important in all situations, social, professional, audition, interview, meeting, dating, anything that you nail your body language and you'll do things subconsciously that will actually be positive, um, you know, and will, um, well, hopefully will be positive, uh, you know, and will influence people positively. But you might be doing some things unconsciously, you know, subconsciously, um, that might make you come across how you don't want to come across, and you're like, oh my God, I didn't even know about that. So it's, it's really interesting to learn about body language because then you can hack it. Then you can, well, it's like the same in every, everything in life. Success can be hacked when you reverse engineer it. So uh, what I've done today, 
um, it's because I study a lot of the science behind success and all this kind of stuff. Um, is there's two scientists in particular, well, two psychologists in particular. Kim, good evening, seeing you join. Um, there's a, an amazing lady called Lillian Glass, um, and there's a lady called Patty Wood as well, and they've both written great books on body language, and I've just taken little bits um, from each, and we're going to look tonight at six body language hacks to nail your next audition. But if you're not an actor, don't worry about that. Replace the word audition with job interview or dating or meeting or anything, because you can apply this to everything. What I was thinking as well, guys, I want to reduce my carbon footprint, right? And I print out all these slides every periscope. Let me just do a little test. Tell me, because I don't know what the lighting's like, and I don't know if this is going to be too bright. Tell me if you can see it on the iPad, like clearly without it kind of like being too bright or anything like that. That looks all right on my camera. Well, let me know, because if you can see it on the iPad, we'll, we'll be better for the environment, and we'll use this from now on. Um, Carol says that's fine. Nina says that's fine. Very, very clear. It's better than the sheets of paper, isn't it? It's high, it's high def. Um, so that's awesome. Kim, I am on airplane mode. My phone is on airplane mode and it is plugged in, so we won't be having any, uh, any cut-offs. Awesome. So we can, uh, we can use this tonight. Let me just move my coffee so I don't smash it over. And hopefully I'll be able to, uh, I'll be able to read this as well from this, from this side. I think we're scrolling up. So the first one, guys, right? The first hack. And this is something, a lot of these are going to sound, sound quite obvious, but the things that we just don't do if we're not really conscious, is to sit all the way back in your seat, okay? If you sit firmly and lean, uh, you know, lean your back straight against the chair. Um, Dr. Lillian Glass, this is, uh, this is, is this psychologist, she wrote a book called The Body Language Advantage, you should get it, or we might do it on Book Club, because I do a book club on a Friday. A bit closer. A bit close says Kat. Well, I can't read it, Kat, if I get that close. <laughs> um, maybe I should hold, I should read it off the paper and just show you the iPad. Um, but yeah, she said basically when you sit back straight against the chair, um, this is an automatic signal of assurance and confidence. Okay, if you're a natural sloucher, just own up now. Who's a natural sloucher? I definitely used to be when I was a kid, particularly. Pretend there's a string pulling you up from the crown of your head. Okay, so if you're sitting right back, literally, all you need to do to make this happen is just make sure that the back of your, well, just your back is flat against the chair. Sit back right in it. Kim says her without a doubt, because what a lot of people do in a stressful situation is they perch. They perch on the edge of the chair, and it makes them look kind of anxious and like they want to just leave. It's like they're just ready to go. When you sit yourself right back and you're like, right, I am here. You know, you ain't going anywhere, are you? You just come across as self-assured, very confident, and it also enables you to kind of open your body language up, you know, as much as possible. We, we mentioned last night, Barvu, good evening. We mentioned last night that the more space you can actually take up with your body language without being absolutely mental and, and crazy. If you think of like a square from here, from under your chin, like this, really, when you're kind of gesticulating and you're using your body language, you want to kind of stay within these kind of remits. Um, but the more space you can take up either with your stance or with your shoulders when you're relaxed, the more um, kind of confident you're going to come across um, and it's going to make you feel empowered. We talked last night as well about power poses, which are a little, <laughs> a little bit mental. If you become part of Bulletproof Factor, you'll learn all about power poses. Um, but it's scientifically proven that when you do these poses, sometimes in private, for two minutes, um, you literally just completely instill yourself with confidence before you go in and do something. So, um, so sitting is a big one, guys. That's hack number one. Make sure when you go in into your audition, particularly when you're, uh, you know, you're doing your pre pre chat, like you're doing your chat to camera or you're talking to the uh, the director and stuff. So make sure you sat right back in your chair. You're not perching on the edge, and that you're also that your legs are facing the person you're talking to. Here's something to watch out for if you kind of go and like enter into a conversation with somebody. Um, if their legs aren't facing directly towards you and they're maybe facing the door or they're facing away from you, that says they want to kind of uh, like not converse with you. What was one? It's briefly, sorry, so one, uh, Mary, was sit all the way back in your seat. Take a screenshot of this, but you can, uh, you can download the PDF of this on the replay as well. It's basically sitting back all the way in your seat, so you're not perching on the edge of your seat, you just sat nice and back, your body language is open, your shoulders are open, but your back is touching the back of the seat. Just shows that you're there, you're there to stay, you know, you're confident and that you're assured. Um, I'll just read you, uh, so Lillian Glass is a uh, body language expert. She wrote a, a, a book called The Body Language Advantage. Um, get it from Amazon, it's an awesome book. And she describes that when you sit your back straight against the chair, 
as an automatic signal of assurance okay and confidence so it's uh, so it's a good one and um, secondly this is interesting right have you ever been in a conversation with somebody where the eye contact is just a little bit too intense and you don't it's like me doing this now and you just don't quite know when to break off contact or whether to look left a little bit or right a little bit or down a little bit it's just a bit too much isn't it eye contact is like essential but it's just sometimes you've got to be aware of when enough is enough uh, Lulu good evening so the second thing that um, I want to talk to you about yeah is eye contact and again um, Lillian, Lillian Glass, the legend, um, in, she says instead of going for direct face, um, instead of going for direct eye contact, instead go for direct face contact. Okay, she recommends that. A more effective way to ensure you look interested and engaged is to look at different parts of someone's face every two seconds. Okay, so rotating from eyes to nose to lips, so you're never just drilling into the person's eyes. Um, so that's an interesting one. I've heard a lot of, um, a few of my mates are dating coaches, right? <laughs> I know that sounds mental, but they teach guys how to go on dates with girls. And I've, I've been at seminars when they've been, they've been running this stuff, and they mention this as well. Um, it just can't all be directly into somebody's eyes because it's too intense, it just puts people off. But if you go eyes, nose, mouth, back to eyes, um, and just rotate that, um, it's uh, very said it's like speed dating. Yeah, exactly. It's just you know, it just kind of makes it engaged, interesting, but not too much for someone to go. Oh God, right, I've got to end this conversation sh short because it's just making me a bit uneasy. Um, I'm sure we've all been there, but yeah, eye contact essential. Um, if you're talking and if I'm if I'm doing a periscope and I'm just like this, guys, you know, it's not very engaging, is it? You're not really going to want to listen to me for very long, and you're probably going <laughs> to turn off. Okay, so I've got to make eye contact with you. Um, but yeah, every two seconds, as long as, as long as you're not kind of looking absolutely manic, going like this, um, just don't hold that gaze for, uh, for too long. So you're sitting back, back against a chair, self-assured, confident, eye contact, but face contact, more importantly. Thirdly, I do this a lot. So I was talking last night, again, on the training for Bulletproof Factor, that it's no uh, coincidence that I gesticulate a lot when I talk and it's, it's, it's through kind of learning more about public speaking and also how our brains interpret language and understand stuff. Um, you'll notice the way that, that some people um, move when they're talking as well um, helps them get their point across as well. This is something to look out for, this is a little bit of extracurricular, it's not really to do with gesturing but I'll, I'll go to that in a sec. Um, you will see sometimes our brains are naturally geared up because of the way that the media and things and society kind of uh, conditions us. We always see, you know, before and after shots. So the before shot where somebody's maybe very overweight, it's always on the left as we look at it. It's on the right of screen looking to us, but it's always on our left. And then the after shot, which is like, look how great I look now, is always on the right. So we tend to, um, we tend to kind of interpret the composition of, a, of the framing of a shot on telly or in life as you know the negative on the left and the positive on the right. So if you're ever trying to kind of convince somebody that something is a good idea, when you're arguing for you know kind of like so you're saying this is what I've got is going to solve your problem, always pitch them the problem when you're on their left as they look at you, and then as you're giving them the solution and you're going, right, okay, this is gonna make it better for you, make sure you're then on their right of screen, okay? So you're, so you're going, this is the problem, but this is the solution. Um, and um, it just, it, it, people's brains tap into that. So left negative, right positive. Um, it helps people understand the issue, and you can do that with your hands as, well, as you're gesturing as well. Remember the square I mentioned, so you've got kind of like this square here. You don't want your hands flailing. You just want the uh, the square underneath your chin out to your shoulders. Uh, it's like a well, what would it be a bit slightly more of a rectangle. Um, but use gesturing while speaking. I'll tell you why. Uh, and again, this probably goes into your pre-chat in an audition. Obviously, it's not necessarily appropriate for the scene if you're actually you know acting something out. But if you're not sure what to do with your hands, go ahead and gesture while speaking. When you're really nervous, you tend to want to hide your hands because they're express they'll express your anxiety. Um, so he's body language expert and author of Snap, Making the Most of First Impressions, Body Language and Charisma, Patty Wood. 
get her book as well. It's, it's really good. Um, but yeah, keeping your hands hidden can uh, be misinterpreted um, as distrustful behaviour. So you want to keep your hands in view, gesticulate, and then following on to point four, this is really important, and again, something you're not really going to be aware of unless you study this stuff, is why you should get the books. Always show your palms, okay? So when your palms are up, it signals honesty and engagement, okay? The limbic brain, I'll, I'll talk to you about a limbic brain in a minute. We have three different brains. We have the, uh, the reptilian brain, which is our most basic brain. Uh, then we have the limbic brain, and then we have something called the neocortex. Um, but your limbic brain picks up the positivity, which will make the interviewer comfortable, Wood says. So Patty Wood says, says, uh, says that. It's one of the reasons we shake hands to show the open palm. It's so tied to survival instincts. If we don't see open palm gestures, it puts us on our guard. In general, upward facing body language, such as open palms, smiles and straight posture also make you look energetic glass says so um so yeah you it's, it's very different if you watch me now if i'm explaining something to you it's very different if i'm talking to you like this than if i'm talking to you like this you know if i was going oh you should check this out very open as opposed to oh you should check this out just weird this is almost kind of like a stop stop what you're doing quiet and down it's almost kind of like a bit more of a commanding kind of body language as opposed to this which is very you know very kind of open and appealing and um, so if you are gesticulating Make sure you're showing palms. It's going to keep people, uh, you know, kind of uh, trustworthy. So yeah, your um, your brains. So yeah, you have like our brains. <laughs> it's mental, isn't it? But our brains are kind of like developed over, you know, through through whatever you believe in. I guess you know if you believe in um, evolution and stuff. But you have at the core, at the very base, you have your reptilian brain, and your reptilian brain. Um, is right at the back of like your brain your brain stem and that that deals with all of your automatic body kind of systems i guess which will be like your breathing your heart rate and um, all the stuff that's kind of automatic um, your flight and fight mechanisms you know where you just want to run away from pain and towards pleasure um, sam you're always late sam says she's saying she's late to the party you've 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 missed out i'll recap at the end though sam um, we're talking about the different brains that we've got at the moment. So at the core of it, you've got your reptilian brain. That deals with all the automatic functions, breathing, heart rate, all that kind of jazz. Then you have the um, limbic brain on top of that. Um, and that deals with all of your emotions. Um, and again, that can be affected by, you know, by body language. Like I say, if I'm, showing, if I'm not showing you open palms, your emotions will, you know, will slide towards the untrustworthy, negative, you know, kind of side of things, as opposed to openness and, you know, positivity. Um, and then on top of that, you have your neocortex, which kind of surrounds, that's kind of like the, the biggest part of your brain, um, and that deals with kind of like creativeness, uh, rationale. It's kind of like the higher consciousness, I guess. So it's like three levels of consciousness: very, very basic, animalistic. Um, then you've got the, uh, you know, you've got kind of like. Uh, your emotion, um, and again, kind of um, very, quite kind of automatic, ingrained, you know, stuff within us. And then above that, you got like higher consciousness, which is uh, makes us human. I guess I don't think um, I don't know, but I don't. I, I'm guessing there's not very other, very, very many uh, species on the planet that have, you know, that higher level of consciousness. Um, so going back, yeah, going back to uh, these body language hacks. We're doing it on the iPad tonight, so I'm saving saving paper. Um, the, uh, so it's the limbic brain, so your emotional brain that picks up on the positivity when you're uh, when you're showing your your hands. We'll also talk about the limbic brain now as well, because the fifth point is you should always what we're saying here. I'm scared to divert from convo, Kim. I might get shouted at again. We'll message you and Ruth. Open palms using a few therapies and there's meditation. It's probably, yeah, a lot of people meditate, don't they, with with open palms like this? Very much so. Very much so. Um, plant your feet on the ground. This is the other one. And this is this is this is because of uh, the way that your brain works as well. So Patty recommends keeping feet firmly um, on the ground. Women, it's a, this is not being sexist, but women should not cross at the knees, rather at the ankles, as this allows them to switch if necessary without being obvious. Okay, there's also a scientific benefit to keeping your feet grounded. It's not impossible, but it's difficult to answer highly complex questions unless both of your feet are on the ground. Wood says. It has to do with being able to go back and forth easily between the limbic reptilian brain um, to the neocortex brain. Um, in layman's terms, planted feet can help you go between creative thought and highly complex rational thought. 
So unless your feet are on the ground. Have you ever been asked the question when you might have been relaxing and kind of like been, been sat back and you go, all right, I need to think about this. And then all of a sudden you kind of lean forward and your feet do touch the floor. Your feet are on the ground. You probably do it naturally, but you don't realize why you're doing it. And you're doing it so you can flip um, between the uh, between the two brains and actually, you know, how they're kind of wired and how they work. So feet on the ground um, when you're in a situation where you want to come across as confident and impress um, is going to help you think faster. It's going to help you think on your feet. I wonder if that was like anything to do with it. That phrase, how do you think on your feet? Uh, when you're on your feet and you're not off your feet. Um, and the last one, so the last hack, it's only six, I say it's quite a short scope I guess tonight, but the last one is um, is leaning in. Um, and it's not really leaning in as much as this girl is doing here. This was the only picture I could find. Um, but leaning in is a natural thing to do when you're engaged in a conversation, Wood says. So leaning slightly forward, keeping your shoulders back. Though remember, you want your shoulders on the back of the chair. Keep your shoulders back and down, so you're just leaning in a bit. Um, and your chest high demonstrates interest. Your posture is an integral part of your nonverbal conversation. Um, so you don't want to be leaning in like that. You just look a little bit weird. Um, affects your breathing, yeah, 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 absolutely, um, definitely. But if I was uh, if I was kind of sat up straight and then just kind of you know I'm just leaning a little bit like that, just makes you know just makes me more uh, more open and uh, and uh, there goes my flirting technique. What's that? What's that, Sam? What was your flirting technique? Leaning in like that. That if that'd be very good. Um, so yeah, so to recap, Sam, for you, six just six things to think about your next audition. They're not highly complex. You don't even need to understand the science behind them, but just things that are going to help you come across as uh, as confident and assured. One is sit all the way back in your seat. So sit all the way back in your seat. Get your back touching the back of the chair. Don't perch on the chair like you're just ready to go out. And remember, um, point your legs towards the person that you're talking to. Um, you want to and, and, and look at their legs as well. Because you don't do this, you know, if, if you want to kind of read somebody's body language and whether they're engaged with you. And um, see if they've turned their legs towards you and not just their body. Second thing, don't go for direct eye contact all the time. You want to go for direct face contact instead and flip between people's eyes, nose and mouth to look engaged. Otherwise you can freak people out if you're just staring at their eyes all the time and it can be a little bit weird. We've all, uh, we've all been there, definitely. Use hand gestures while speaking. Don't hide your hands because people can interpret that as distrustful. Um, you want to uh, use your hands and it will also help you, uh, it helps us to understand what, what's actually being said when people talk it through. I said last night, it's a little bit weird, but one, one example I've read quite a few times of somebody who was brilliant with hand gestures to get across their point was Hitler. And that's a bit mental. I mean, he's only a tiny little guy with a very warped brain, but he managed to convince a hell of a lot of people. His public speaking skills were probably pretty good, but people have studied his hand gestures a lot. Um, and whether he did naturally or he was trained, I don't know. Um, but he, you know, it can really influence people's understanding if you're using your hands a lot. I will use my hands even if I'm on the phone. <laughs> there you go, that's fine. Point four: show your palms. Okay, so we don't want to have our palms down like this. If I'm if I'm talking to you and I'm going, oh yeah, just listen to me, guys. It's quite commanding and demeaning, that, isn't it? I'm doing that. It's kind of like going pipe down, shut up. Whereas I'm going, oh guys, listen, listen to this. Such a different interpretation, isn't it? Such a different way for me to do it. Listen to this, guys. You go, what does he want? It's a bit serious. Guys, listen to this. So different, so different. So show your palms. It's built into us naturally, um, into our limbic brains, um, that we need to see people's palms, um, or we don't trust them. So when you're using, uh, when you're gesticulating, make sure you, your hands are up and not down. Fifth thing, plant your feet on the ground. It's gonna help you switch between your, uh, your, your brains, your reptilian limbic brain or your neocortex brain. So basically your, uh, uh, kind of emotion, your creativity. Uh, it's going to help you switch between the two. And then six, lean in, but not like her. <laughs> should, have got, should have got a better picture, really. Um, but yeah, we just want to lean in with our shoulders up, though, and our chest out. Okay, so we, you know, it's just going to help us uh, help us to engage more. Um, that's just six points. There's literally, oh, there's so many that I could have picked out, and I might do another scope with with some more. But I didn't want to overface everybody and give you like you know 25 tonight. You wouldn't remember any of them. Choose one now that you're going to make sure because you're not going to be able to focus and remember all six when you're in a stressful environment you probably gonna have to build on these but choose one which one are you going to choose that you're going to be aware of or conscious next time you go into a job interview an audition a date i don't know see the doctor optician 
whoever you're going to see, who you want to come across as confident and assured, which one are you going to go for? Limited eye contact, sitting upright. Uh, so we've got two for sitting upright. Kim's sitting upright. Um, Mary's limiting her eye contact, showing palms with open hands, says Carol. Um, sitting up, says Carl. Um, I think sitting up is kind of one that you know we can all remind ourselves of quite easily because it's something we all tend to do when, you, especially if you get a nice comfy chair. It's something like this, don't you? Oh. <laughs> you know, that's not very good. I think I do a lot of those naturally, probably sitting upright. I do the rest, I think. Yeah, it's, it's you know, stuff that you probably will do, but what, what I think is you know, powerful is when you realise you're doing it and why you're doing it, because then you can hack it and do it more, because you know why you're doing it. There's also little things as well, guys, like, and we'll probably do one on hand gestures as well. Was, we, we were talking on the, on the uh, training last night. The thing you can do, this is a very powerful, very confident waist. It's called a steeple. Basically, literally, just touch the, the fingertips of your hands together. Um, when you want to put, when you want to put a point across to somebody that you are confident about what you're saying, you really understand it. This is a really, really good, uh, a really good way to do that with your hands like this. This is when you're talking to somebody. When you're listening, you can flip it the other way as well, like this. And that's kind of like that's that's saying that you're you're open and that you're uh, you're engaged and that you're listening, but you know you're still you're still very confident and together. It's like the Doctor Evil pose. Um, but yeah, you always notice a lot of politicians using this. Um, definitely Barack Obama. I see him doing this quite a lot. Tony Blair used to do it loads when he was uh, when he. Oh, there you go. So uh, yeah, Fanny said that Obama as well. Um, it is very business-like, definitely. It's, it's. Um, I don't know. I guess when you're talking about, you know, you're either selling something or you're talking about something that requires, you know, a deep understanding. It's just another visual signal to somebody that you're confident and you know what you're talking about. And if you combine it with, you know, back on the chair, sitting upright, chest out, um, you're going to come across a lot more confident than if I'm, you know, if I'm talking to you like this, going, oh yeah, I've got this really good idea for something, and uh, I think you should probably buy it. So I went, ah, Mary, that's a really good idea for something and uh, I think you should buy it. <laughs> it's a big difference, isn't it? It's such a big difference. It really, really is. And yeah, I'm saying exactly the same thing, but it's a huge difference. Um, but yeah, so little things like that, it's just being aware of them. And it really is next level stuff because people just aren't aware of this stuff. But when you are, and you might do it naturally, but it's nice to be aware that you're doing it and why you're doing it. Because you can use it to, it's not, it's not negative, like horrible manipulation. Um, it's influencing people positively. Um, and you know, it can, and, and of course we want to. We don't want to manipulate people to do bad things, but we want to manipulate people in terms of you know, to make the situation better for ourselves and them. There's nothing wrong with that. Subtle head nod came naturally then. Um, yeah, nodding was another one that I you know I, I could have put down when you're when you're engaged with somebody. Um, if you keep nodding, when I used to, I do a lot of um, interview videos. Um, but I did a lot of corporate videos interviewing people. Um, if you wanted them to carry on, if you're getting like vox pops out on the street and you're asking people's opinions on something, sometimes people who you know were just members of the public weren't very open to talking that much, and they'd give you very you know stilted answers. You might say, "Oh, what do you think about such and such a thing?" "Oh, yeah, I think it's all right." You'd be like, "Right, I need more than that." But for the vox pop to work, you couldn't speak over what they were saying and stuff to get more out of them. If you just nod, honestly, if somebody stops talking. A vox pop is, is like a, uh, a talking head, like you know what when you see on the news and you'll get someone's public opinion, they'll go, oh, let's go and see people's opinion of Donald Trump. And you'll just see a microphone and you have someone on the street going, I think he's great, I love everything he says. Um, and then it'll flick to somebody else going, I hate him, he's a moron. Um, that, they're vox pops. Um, so you want to, you know, the best, best vox pops are people with an opinion who continue to talk. And one way to get them to continue to talk was shutting up yourself. And even when they finished and stopped talking, just keep nodding at them, and they'd carry on. It was bizarre, but yeah, it, it felt a bit uncomfortable for me to do it first. Cause I'm like, I like to jump in and save people when they're drowning a bit, you know, when they don't speak enough. Um, but if you just uh, keep nodding at somebody, they'll carry on talking for as long as you keep nodding. <laughs> I promise you, it's another way you can stay engaged with somebody and get more out of them. Um, but I just think it's interesting. It's really interesting. But those two books, um, I'll get it on the paper slides as opposed to the iPad. Um, the two books, definitely check them out. So um, the first one, see Sam's nodding on the periscope. First one was the Body Language Advantage um, by Lillian Glass. Um, so check that book out. And the other one was by Patty Wood, and it's got a long title that I can never remember. It's called Snap. Snap, making the most of first impressions, body language, and charisma by Patty Wood. Another really great book to look at. Um, 
wonder why it's called snap. What is that to do with mirroring? Because um, mirroring is another thing you can do. And this is something uh, if you want somebody to kind of like feel you have an affinity with them, if they if they very subtly um, assume a position, like say like this for instance, you then mirror them as well and sit like this as well. It subconsciously kind of pervades agreement with them. Um, you know, you might put your hand up on your head at the same time they put a hand up on their head. Um, it, all sorts of things like that can, uh, you know, we interpret them positively. Thought handouts were on the tablet. Uh, yeah, they should be right. Well, this I printed out them, Sam, just in case the tablet didn't work and people couldn't see it. So from now on, we're going to uh, we're going to go on the uh, on the tablet. Um, Carol's out of here. Carol, thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure as always. Use these these hacks this week. See um, see how you can positively influence people through them. Um, and we'll catch you on maybe on Friday's Periscope for the uh, for the book club. And I'm not even decided which book we're going to look at yet. So I'll tell everybody probably tomorrow night or Friday morning. Uh, you probably won't have a chance to get it before the first one, but don't worry, I'm going to read it to you and then you get it for uh, for the following three because it's going to be uh, the book club for the entire entirety of March. Um, so there you go, just six little body language hacks that you can use. Um, to influence people positively, um, it's uh, will do. Thank you, says uh, says Carol. Very interesting. Awesome. Thanks for uh, for joining. I just find it fascinating. Like I say, we were talking on the training for Bulletproof Factor last night, all about this kind of stuff, um, and it's stuff that nobody really bothers to study um, a lot of the time, unless you're in business and you're selling things to people. But you know, the acting industry, you are in business and you are selling things to people because it's you. So to use these kind of things is really really valuable when you when you're aware of them. Um, and you can use them to your advantage. Um, so yeah, everybody's chosen the one that they're going to uh, they're going to focus on. Let me know how that goes. You can tweet me. It's at Ross A Grant. You can tweet at Bulletproof Act, or you can tweet at Act on This TV. A whole load of Twitter accounts. Um, come and join the Facebook group. It's um, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Act on This TV, or forward slash groups forward slash uh, Bulletproof Actor. Um, so check that out. Um, like I say, I'll keep you posted about the book club on Friday, guys. No idea what it is yet, but I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted in the Facebook group um, tomorrow or Friday. Um, and I'll see you uh, Friday night, 10 p.m., uh, for whatever book we're, we're looking at. Uh, so don't go out. Don't have a life. Stay in. Drink coffee with me. Cheers, Ross. When I get an audition, I'll be sure to see you. <laughs> Nina, have you not an audition yet? Right, we need to sort this out. We, right, we need to get Nina a bloody audition, all right? Um, Sam says be there or be somewhere else. Exactly, be on the scope or be somewhere else. But you're not, you ain't going to get the, the hacks that you need in your life to, to to be great when you get an audition. Nina, we need to get you an audition for something. What's your agent doing? If you if you rang him today, what? When did you last ring him? And he said, listen, I can't remember who you're with. Um, PJs and Periscope, excellent cat. That's how we roll. We're so rock and roll. <laughs> Uh, when was the last time you spoke to your agent, Nina? What's he, what's he saying to you? Is he, is he giving you the whole, it's really quiet and nothing's going on? Malarkey. Because I don't buy that a lot of the time. Because we know it's not always quiet and nothing's going on. I know in Manchester, particularly at the moment, there's at least three big projects being cast. Big primetime like, TV dramas uh, being cast in Manchester right now. Um, Come on, Nina, let's sort it out. She says, too bloody right. Emailed him yesterday, but we'll speak to him soon. Yeah, honestly, people can hide behind emails. Give him a bloody bell or go and see him. Sit in the chair, back against the chair. Open body language. Gesticulate when you, with your palms open like this. Feet on the floor so you can switch between your limbic and your neocortex brain. Um, and, uh, and yeah, use all these, all these tips. Missed that, missed that comment. Someone said something about their agent. I think it was Sam. Will do. Get me in. Oop north. Yeah, get yourself up north, honestly. There's probably loads more going on down south, though. Um, definitely. So we need to, uh, need to swap swap tips. Definitely. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make a few calls. Get on to a few people down south and see what's going on, Nina. Um, definitely. We, um, we need to have the best year ever this year. So uh, let's do it. See how I use my palms openly, then. Best year ever. Imagine if I went, we need to have the best year ever this year. Mental. <laughs> Right, I'll do it. Um, have a good one, guys. I'm going to go and finish my coffee off, upload this replay, and I'll see you Friday evening, 10 p.m. Bulletproof Book Club. Be there. I'll be down at the pub, wasting your life away. Bye for now. Bye.